Hey, this is Professor Dan Kernler with um, Elgin Community College, and this is a quick video on part two of our project. Uh, there are three parts to this this uh, part of the project. This is where you're actually going to write your survey related to the five variables that you had in part one. Um, so the three steps here, you're going to design an initial draft and test it out on 10 people and then revise your survey uh, based on the test responses you have. So for your initial draft, what you want to do is write questions that relate to your five variables in part one. And then I put a note here, be, be sure to look at any feedback that I gave to part one uh, and make any adjustments. You might need to email me uh, or stop by my office or give me a call. Sometimes that's a lot faster than email. Um, it just takes a long time to go back and forth where when you're in a conversation, you can really knock that out. But be sure to update anything uh, if it looks like it's not right from part one. If your variables didn't meet the criteria, you can't write questions then because you won't have the right data for further parts of the project. Um, for each question, you want to include two things, and this is in the outline that you'll fill in. Uh, what kind of results do you expect? Uh, you know, if you're looking at age of ECC students, like, well, you know, I kind of expect most people to be between you know, 18 and 30 or whatever, whatever you want to respond there. And then why you included the question. Um, is there something interesting that you think might happen or whatever there? And I'm not going to be grading that significantly. You know, <laughs> it's your reason why you included it. I just want you to think a little bit about why you included it. Uh, and then this is really important. Later on, we're going to be calculating means and standard deviations and all these things we learned in chapter three, uh, linear correlation coefficients. And in order to do that, we can't have classes of data for quantitative variables. So anything that's a number, you must leave open ended. You absolutely need to leave it open ended. And it's tough because we're so used to seeing surveys that have you give responses of in a range and you you shade in that bullet, you know, that that bubble that meets your range, but we absolutely cannot do that here. We have to leave them open ended. Uh, one thing you can do is if you have um, some multiple choice things where people might respond with their degree plans or something like that or something like that's going to have a multiple multiple choice they're going to select one. You could consider just doing an open-ended version for your 10 test subjects and then using the most frequent response responses and use those for your final version. So, uh, Your test data, you're going to just test it out on 10 subjects. These can be your friends or family or whatever. The, if they're very different from your actual population, the results might not really make sense. Uh, but these don't need to be randomly selected or anything like that. This is very casual, just trying to test out your subject and trying to see your survey, trying to see if it works. So, uh, You need to record that data and include that in your project submission for part two as well. Uh, so what you're looking for here is did they understand the questions, were there wording issues, um, you, again you could consider using those most common responses and then looking for those to, to your multiple choice questions but again not for quantitative variables. So then your revised survey, you just basically make any updates um, if some problems needed to be reworded or some questions need to be re reworded. Uh, and then for each question, you're going to put a comment underneath um, why you changed it, you know, what needed to be changed, and, and why did you, or did you leave it the same? What, what, what kind of results did you get that maybe felt uh, that you felt comfortable leaving it the same as your initial draft? So uh, that's it. This one is pretty quick, assuming part one was okay. Sometimes you need to revise part one, which can delay um, the, the survey here uh, for part two. So lastly, don't forget to read through the rubric and see how you're going to be graded. Um, quite a few people actually forgot to do responses to the discussion board or didn't know those were necessary. So uh, be sure to look at those. You don't want to miss out those easy points. Um, so look at the rubric at the bottom of the project description to see how you will be graded.